Hello and welcome. This is founder Laren with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, loading and using localized sounds within the Fantasy Grounds Unity platform. This has been kind of scattered information. You kind of have some stuff on YouTube. You got stuff on the um, extension page where you can download the free VLC player. And you just have a lot of older videos out there that kind of show you just some of the stuff that was done before the new sound integration. So um, first things first, uh, nothing really as much has changed there. So if you're going to want to use the sound within Fantasy Grounds and you want to pipe that to your friends, you're still going to have to figure that part out. So even if you have a collection of audio stored on your computer, you're still going to have to find a solution to route the audio from your computer to Discord or to one of the streaming services, or maybe you're using Skype or whatever it is. So let's make that clear that you still have to do that part. Um, just because you have a new um, player in Fantasy Grounds that will play links and stuff, it doesn't solve the issue of not having the audio port over to your player. So there's lots of ways around that. But the thing I'm going to um, also mention is that if you do use localized sounds in Fantasy Grounds, you'll have less control, meaning that the volumes, the looping, all that sort of stuff, you'll have to do that manually outside of Fantasy Grounds unless you decide to use this extension, which is on the um, Fantasy Grounds Forge. It's free, so I'll bring that up. Uh, this has been something that's recently been developed. This is Tark's um, extension. It works pretty good. The thing is, is you really have to read and kind of look in between the lines here of what, what's actually um, happening. So you would download this extension first, and then you would install it in Fantasy Grounds, restart Fantasy Grounds, and then when you start your new session, or maybe you're in a campaign, you have to select Feature Sound VLC. So what that does is it adds a separate um, controller for your external sound player. So in this case, it's VLC. So it's designed to work with VLC. So this way you have control over pause and mute and looping and that sort of thing. When you're using the Sirenscape sounds, you have a lot more options. You have a lot more control over those things. But natively, that the sound um, ex, uh, kind of integration was more, more in line with uh, using the Sirenscape player. But some people don't want to pay for the subscription or they don't want to um, have to pay another fee or whatever. So you can route your audio uh, your own way and kind of trigger it from Fantasy Grounds. But that's really all the um, audio uh, integration is doing for you is it's giving you an interface and a method to interface with whatever player that you're going to use within the Fantasy Grounds platform. And you can set up your own triggers and that sort of thing. So that's kind of what it's allowing you to do. But it doesn't route the audio or push the audio to your players. It doesn't send it to Discord. You have to actually either have a bot or a program or something that's going to send the audio to your players or out to your stream if you're going to stream. So that hasn't gone away. That, that, that same barrier is there. So the um, sound integration for localized sounds is a little better because you get to kind of interact with it in Fantasy Grounds, but it doesn't change the fact that you still have to download software, you still have to set it up, you still have to use things to get it to work right. And I think that's where some people kind of go, eh, you know, they're not really sure. But I'm going to cover the Fantasy Grounds part of it, but as far as routing your audio from your computer to a streaming service or Discord. There's plenty of tutorials out there that show you that piece of it. I'm not going to go through that part of it because it's different for everybody. There's so many settings and, and things that, that you have to look at, and everyone's computer is a little different, so I'm not even going to cover that. But I will cover the idea of using this VLC extension to control your audio when you're in Fantasy Grounds. And this only works with VLC 2.0. So make sure that you only download the older version of VLC, which is in this archives link on the actual page where you get this support for the VLC player. A lot of people say, I can't figure out why it's not working and such. Make sure that you're only using VLC 2.0. 
it's an older, lightweight, 2000 some odd. I mean, it's, it's, it's been around. This is the only player that this setup will work for. It's not going to work for an older one point whatever, and it's not going to work for three. It has to be 2.0. And he's even conveniently provided a link that you can click on and download whatever version you want. So if you click on this link, it takes you to an archive where you can download these. You have a 7-zip version, there's an EXE version, and then there's a regular zip version. So you can pick whatever version you like. I don't know if this is uh, available for Linux and all the other things, but I imagine there's some version of 2.0 out there. Okay, so the next thing is once you download that player, it's really, depending on the, what version you have, so one is an install, one isn't. So you got to make sure you know which, what you're doing there. But once you have that set up, you can essentially bring up the VLC player, and there you'll have to put in some settings if you want it to work with Fantasy Ground. So I'm going to bring up the VLC player, and what it's doing now is it's giving me a headache because I did not point it to the right place. So this is my Fantasy Grounds background uh, back folder, the data folder. This is where I'm going to end up putting all my sounds in. So when you first start this, this process, when you first load Fantasy Grounds, up here on the top left is how you get to the back end. You're going to add a folder called Sounds right here. So this Sounds folder is not present by default. It doesn't just magically appear. You actually have to put it there. Even with the sound extension and all that other new features, it wasn't really made for localized sound, really. I mean, even though you can do it. But you need to put your own folder there. Once you do that, you can put subfolders in there of whatever MP3 files that you want to play. So these are where the directory should be, is in the Fantasy Grounds data directory, not anywhere else. So you want it in Fantasy Grounds. And then you can put it in a subfolder called sound. So it has to be in here for security reasons. There's no way around it unless you're a genius with networking and such. But this is essentially where that folder must be. And then in that folder, you're going to put all your sound files. So I would recommend going through your sound files and organizing them before you dump them all in here. Because you're going to end up with a huge file, a huge mess in Fantasy Grounds. It's going to be very hard to sort through. So I recommend, if you got the time, to go through your audio files, all your collections, and just grab the ones you think you'll need. You don't need to put every single file in here. If you do that, when it goes to build the list, when you add these to the Fantasy Grounds, it's going to be a pain in the butt. It's going to be a huge list, so it's going to it's going to take a long time for it to render that list in Fantasy Grounds. So just be careful with how many files that you're going to add to Fantasy Grounds. But you can go ahead and store the content here, but when you're importing it into Fantasy Grounds, you don't want 50,000 entries. That's going to make things really tough on you. So I'm going to go back to Fantasy Grounds. This is the subfolder. You have to put that in there, and all your sounds go in that subfolder. And we're talking MP3s. I don't know if it supports FLAC. I don't know if it supports WAV files. All I know is it's MP3s. If it does the others, fine, but I have no idea if it's actually going to support other file formats. For now, we're talking MP3 files. So the next thing is the actual settings. So when you install the VLC player or when you download it from the Fantasy Grounds Unity um, Forge, you need to update Fantasy Grounds, and it will pull in this VLC player. It's under Feature sounds VLC. And the only reason I'm using this extension is because you have a little bit more control over the audio once you import it into Fantasy Grounds. If you use the basic one that's provided now in the interface, it's going to be kind of tough to control the audio. And one of the things you're going to come across when you use localized audio is generally you don't have a mixer that's going to kind of fade the, the volumes in and out. You're kind of relying on the file itself. Some recordings are higher, some are lower, and you'll know that from Sirenscape, but they have a way to kind of smooth them in and out when you transition between files. It kind of fades one out and fades one in, and then these are all set up around modules and stuff. When you do this locally for yourself, you're doing everything yourself. You're managing the files. 
you're installing the software, you're doing all the linking, you're figuring out how to pipe your audio out to your friends and to your Discord or whatever um, program you're using. So the the localized files can be done, but there's some setup, there's some work that needs to be done, and that's kind of what I'm going over. So here is the actual interface. Over here on the right is the sound content button, or the sound context button. And in here, we're going to click settings. Okay. So when you install the VLC player, you'll see a button called VLC. But by default, you have a file where you can import files. But this does not work with the VLC player. This works just within Fantasy Grounds. It, it has nothing to do with the VLC player. It's a whole separate thing. This is what I'm saying. You don't have the volume control. You don't have a way to actually mute files or pause them or loop them or anything like that. So that's why we're using the VLC player instead. If you're using Sirenscape, you have a lot more options. I mean, you can fade things out. They're all labeled. They got identification numbers. This makes it easier to manage in Fantasy Grounds. And, you know, I got over a thousand different sounds that are already managed for me um, in in the uh, Sirenscape player. But I just added some files to the VLC area. And this is the kind of a preliminary list. I didn't add all of my audio. I just added like a couple folders worth. I wanted to see how this goes before I go crazy. Now, one of the things that people are struggling with is how do you get those files in there? So on the file import, you have to do this in the VLC area, not in this other file. You got to do it in here if you're going to use that extension. You hit file import, and what you're going to do is go to your folder wherever your your um, audio files are stored. So in my case, I got to go back to a uh, storage drive that I have, and then I'm going to go to downloaded content. I have a folder called RPG audio or fantasy audio. Okay, so this is where all of my collections are. So if I double click that, this is going to be all of my folders that I have stored on a different drive. So I don't take up my hard drive space on my main drive where fantasy grounds is. So I got quite a few options here. I'm not going to do all of these. I'm going to do some of them. I'm going to, you know, figure out which ones I want and then bring them into Fantasy Grounds. Otherwise, you're going to just fill up your hard drive with sounds that you may not use. So I'm just going to go through this Fantasy 3 preview folder and go to music. And it has, you know, maybe a dozen or so. So this is where people are having problems. When you are supposed to copy and paste this, you have to do it a certain way. You can't just copy and paste it because it's not going to give the file path that you're going to want. So file path is the complete address plus the file name. So if I just copy this, that's not going to, if I just copy this up here, that's not going to do it. I have to actually hold the shift key and then highlight the information and then click copy path. So it's not just copy, copy path, which also copies all of the actual file names and the directories. So if I hit shift and control, and highlight these and then hit control. So shift, right click, copy as path or copy path. That's what you need to copy. You can't copy individual, uh, just the, the directory. It has to also have the path to it. So when you hit copy, now over here in the import, you'll hit control V as in Victor. And it has the path, which is the drive, the actual folder names and the file names. This is where people are having problems because they don't really, they're just copying it or they have VLC player three or whatever. They're not really reading the instructions. So this are, well, I wouldn't say instructions. They're not able to find all the information in one spot. So it's difficult to, to get all this information. It took me about an hour to go through and figure out all this stuff because it's scattered all over the place at the time. So I'm going to hit file import. And when it does that, it says error, one or more file paths unable to be processed or needs to be in the data folder. So this is the error that you're going to get if that copy process didn't work. So I'm going to go back to my folder. I must have copied something wrong. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit copy again. I'm going to highlight with the shift key. I'm going to right click, copy as path or copy path. Yeah, it just gave me another error. So I'm doing something wrong. And that's what the main problem that people are having is the way you copy this. So you're supposed to... There we go, copy is path. So I have the shift key and I have control. Okay, so when you get it copied properly, that's when it's actually gonna start working. So for some reason, I'm not doing it right. But nonetheless, that's the difference. You can't just go in and copy the file itself you have to actually grab the correct directory. So let me try another folder. So I'm going to go to sound design. Copy as path. Go to file import. Yeah, there could be something in there that it's not an actual MP3. But nonetheless, that's the big problem that most people are having is you're getting this error that says one or more file paths unable to be processed or needs a data folder. So that's because we're not copying the whole address. We're only getting part of it. So I want to go and show you something that I'm working on that will help. So this is an article that I'll put paste in after the video where it kind of goes through some of the basics. And when you get down to the bottom, it starts getting more into the, the actual um, settings and where you can download if you need any of these, like the virtual cable, the VLC, uh, for, and then also how to route audio from your computer to the actual program. And that's where a lot of people are going to have problems is even if you get all this done, now you're going to have to go and route the audio to one service or another. So make sure you read the description on the actual download page if you want to use the VLC support. So what this adds, instead of just the regular file manager, is the VLC adds this control, which allows you to uh, change the volume to stop, loop, or mute. If you use the regular file, you don't have any controls. Pretty much when you play something, it plays as it is. You don't have much control over it unless you go over to your VLC player and open it and stop it or, or have it minimized and then stop it. So that's really what, what the big problem is. So... So let me try it this way. This is the Fantasy Grounds way. Yeah, I'm not doing something right because it wasn't doing this before. I had no problem. So I'm doing something incorrectly when it comes to copying and pasting those files. And it has to do with the way that you're copying it. You have to hold shift, control, and then highlight your these the files.
copy his path. Yeah, I'm still not doing something right. But nonetheless, if you go to this, this is the research that I was doing. And this here is the, some of the videos and all of the information. I've kind of collected everything together. Um, let me see. So there was a spot up here that essentially it gives you like the preview video. Yeah, so once you're done, you to add your directory path within the Fantasy for Grounds Unity audio setup, if you're using Windows 11, select the files you want to import and select copy as path from the right-click menu and paste them into the import window. Due to security risk, local audio files must trigger from inside the Fantasy Grounds data folder in a folder that you must create called sounds. So that's really where the, the biggest disconnect is, I believe. I'm not sure why why this isn't working for me. I could have I might have to restart Fantasy Grounds or something. I think that that might be part of it. But nonetheless, that's where a lot of people are getting hung up. And then when you're done doing all that and you've done all the work, then you got to figure out how to send the audio from your computer to Discord. So you can use that voice meter or there's a bot that will do it. You can set up a secondary um, Discord account with the uh, uh, using the beta. So you'd have two versions of Discord going. There's so many. To, yeah, see, here's an update right here. So doing all this kind of stuff while there's updates going on and changes being made is difficult. So you might have to wait a few days for a lot of this stuff to settle down because there's a lot of changes being made right now. So every time they report a new bug or anything like that, you're going to run into some of these issues that I'm seeing now. So earlier, just like an hour ago, I didn't have any problems. So I don't I don't know what 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 I've done differently, but something is obviously not right. And I might like like I said I might have had to restart uh, the Discord or, or the uh, Fantasy Grounds client. So I'm going to do that shortly. But if there is another update uh, coming out right now, so it must be another bug that they've they've fixed or updated recently. So, but basically when you get this all set up, you'll be able to play your localized sounds. You'll have a little bit more control over it because you're going to be accessing this through the uh, VLC extension. And then it's going to allow you to um, play your audio from your hard drive. But that still doesn't solve the problem of routing the audio to wherever you want it to go other than your headphones. So if you want it to go to your friends and Discord or to a stream or to OBS or whatever, you're going to have to figure out how to route that audio. So that's a whole other thing. But in this case, you can use Fantasy Grounds to trigger things kind of like you would with Sirenscape. And you would have the way to and the ability to trigger those through the interface. But you're not necessarily going to have a way to route the audio. The Sirenscape player has a web-based player, and, and all the players have to do is go to that browser link, open it up, and it plays through their browser. So they already have that solution. But if you're going to do localized sounds, you're going to have to do that yourself. So again, I'm in the um, I put all the files in a folder that I made called Sounds. Then all the sounds that I have in my collection are in this this folder. Once I've done that. Then I install the VLC player by updating Fantasy Grounds. It pulls in a, an extension, and this is called uh, Feature Sounds VLC. Uh, and then you're going to add that before you start your session. You want to enable that that extension if you want to use the VLC player. You don't have to, but I suggest that if you want more control over your uh, third-party player, it would help. And the other problem that I had earlier was that I didn't even have VLC open. So you got to have that too. So you may make sure you only install version 2.0, not 3, not 1.5. It needs to be version 2. So I'm going to go back to my downloads folder. And here's my VLC player. I need to make a shortcut because I didn't make one. Uh, no. VLC, show more options, create shortcut. 
Where did that go? <laughs> yeah, it sure isn't as easy as it used to be. But anyways, you want to have this open. This is what it looks like. This is the VLC player. It's very minimal. It's not fancy. And in here, you're going to go to View or into Tools. Go to Preferences. And then in the interface part, you want to click on that. And then you go to the main interface button. And down here on Show Settings, you need to show all. Because if you don't, you're not going to see this. So show all, and then main interface, and then web player. So this is to get the um, actual um, player to work with the VLC extension. And then you hit save. Sometimes you have to put in a new HTTP address if you're going to uh, change anything. So when it launches, it'll have a, um, a default directory. But if for some reason you have an advanced network, you're going to have to change that. And I hit save on it and just minimize it, not close it. And then when you go into the actual sound setup for the VLC player in settings, when you, you'll see a new button called VLC. You have to put in this routing path, which is stated in the instructions on the VLC player extension page. So it's just localhost 8080 write slash requests. So don't change don't change that at all unless you absolutely have to. With this address, if you do change anything on your computer, it has to be changed in the settings here and changed here if you have an advanced networking setup where you have to have the actual IP address. This is the default port. And this is also subject to being blocked by antiviruses and firewalls and all that stuff too. So if you have that issue, that could that could be another thing that you got to check. But there is the settings for that. It's kind of uh, a little bit convoluted. There's a lot to it. But once you have it set up, you can play localized files. So look what I did. I actually closed the player. How silly. Don't close the player. Minimize it. I'm so used to being able to just, just close it. So this for your first time, when you go to play this, it'll ask you for permission. You can say yes every time or just say yes to all. And it should be playing the audio through here. So again, you can do this with just the Fantasy Grounds file import, but you don't have a lot of control over it. But if you have the VLC, you have this control pop out. And the last video I watched, they said that this is going to have a shortcut button so you can drag and drop this down to the hotkeys which will make this way more useful. But you can set the loop on here. You can turn the volume down or up. And you can you can actually stop. So if you've got more than one file going, you can hit stop all and it will it'll stop playing. So that's the other thing is the the uh, Sirenscape player, you got a little bit more control. You it'll kind of mix the volumes in and out. This one you're kind of relying on the, the original recording and you have to also route the audio out to your player. So I keep saying that 50,000 times, but for some reason that seems to be the assumption that this is going to get around that problem. It doesn't. You still have to route your, your audio to your player. So just keep that in mind. So setting up the extensions, setting up the, the, the routings, and then in, importing all these audio files and now the next step is you would probably want to make some kind of a sound association with something in your game that you want it to uh, trigger so you have to set up a chat trigger which is a whole nother thing so if you're going to do that you can come into the, the sound sets you can create a new chat trigger and then you have to define it. You give it a name, but then you're going to say, is it a trigger that goes to that's triggered through chat or from casting a spell or is it attack fumble, attack miss? So these subtypes and the type are going to change the menu. So you got one that's kind of a generic and then you have one that's set by triggers. And then the subtypes are different types of triggers. Like what most of you are probably going to use cast or chat. 
So if a certain key phrase comes up, which is a pattern, you can do this and turn on this red, uh, turn it as a regular expression. And what that does is it triggers the event based off of the text in this chat area. So you might have to go back and, and you'll have to associate these with certain sounds like spells or, you know, that sort of thing. When you buy the Sirenscape, it's kind of already done for you. So that's what you're paying for when you buy that subscription. And also when it comes to those those sound audio links, the, the packs that you're getting on the store for 10 bucks, that's what it's doing is it's doing all these little tedious um, file associations with the actions. So if you have Sirenscape and you have a module loaded that it supports, it's already going to pull the context of these into that into that collection. So you're not going to have to go through and, and do all that association. You might have to do one or two, but not not 50 of them or 100. So the the uh, local sound thing isn't a new thing. This has been around for a while. And I if uh, when I recalled the last time I really got into this is I was able to set up on my character sheets on the back of the character sheet on the actions tab, I made my own little effects on the back in which all it was was a, a chat message, but it sent that information to the chat and it would trigger something, an event that I had associated with it in uh, Sirenscape. But this is a long time ago when it was the DOE sound sets before even Matacure's uh, plugin. And that's another thing. If you guys are already using Matacure and Rob Tui Sirenscape links and such, just keep using them. This isn't going to change anything. The only difference is a smoother integration with using um, the uh, Sirenscape player. And if you're new to Fantasy Grounds and you're new to the audio thing, it'll it'll the, the value will be there. If you're someone who's familiar with this and you're already doing something, I would just stick with that and kind of let this ride for a bit and see how it goes and what direction. Yeah, you don't think you have to jump out and change anything because really you're just going to be duplicating your work. Um, so if you have like stuff set up already in Fantasy Grounds, you're essentially going to have to do that all over using the uh, the newer interface. So if you're using the Matacure's uh, extension for sound chat triggers and such, you're probably just better off just keeping it like that. I mean, that's my opinion. You can switch over if you want, but I think it's an unnecessary amount of work. This really adds value to people that are new or someone who has been on the fence about trying to do audio with Fantasy Grounds. Sirenscape does provide an easier way to do that. But if you're going to do it manually, it's still roughly the same amount of work. So it, it's it's really not much you can do about it. It's just the way it is. The, the way that this VLC implementation works is pretty nice because at least you have control over volume and you don't have to necessarily um, you know, subscribe to a subscription service. So you do have that option, but again, I think it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie, it's just a ton of work. But I went ahead and put the links to the resources here. And what I've done is kind of went through the forums, went to YouTube, I went to the Discord, and I checked out some videos and kind of compiled everything together. So this kind of gives you an overview and then it kind of gives you a reminder here. So you have to build your own links and chat triggers. Um, local audio still needs to be piped into Discord or OBS via a bot or an app like Voice Meter. You must add your local sound collections to a subfolder in the Fantasy Grounds data folder called Sounds. So and then you point the audio integration tool, which we were you know, struggling with earlier, and put that in your local subdirectory. So I'm going to try that one more time. Let's see what is going on there. So I want to go through. Oh, and by the way, this is the video that uh, Bane had put out, which is really a useful video. I link that in this description of this video. So all my sources that I use, I'm going to put that in the video too. Because I, I think the people that did the initial work should get the credit for that. And not that it's about credit, but you know, it would be polite. Okay, so turn that off go to the VLC you go to the file import and you should technically be able to go to your subfolder wherever your audio files are stored and do it that way so I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and to go back into my um, 
RPG folder. It was called uh, RPG or Fantasy Audio, excuse me. And then these are all my collections. So I'm going to come in here and maybe I want to do the spells combat. There we go. Okay, so here's combat. So this has chain mail, um, shield bash, shield strike. So that's kind of cool. Those those sound useful. So they're saying that you have to highlight and hit the uh, shift key, and then right, and then right click, and go to copy as path. Hopefully, I don't get that error message again. Yep, I did. So I'm not sure what I'm doing, but one of the files in there must be bogus or not. It may not be right. But that's essentially how you're supposed to do it. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I had it working before, so I don't know what I've changed. But nonetheless, that's how you add these folders or files to your folder. So that's, I mean, that's the last instructions I see anyways. And obviously, you can see I got it to work before. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's definitely something goofy. But let me see something. File import. Oh, oh, I see. Some of these are wave files. Got it. So there you go. So I don't think wave files works here, folks. So let me try that again. I see. I wasn't expecting that. So let me go to my folder again and go to my... Okay, so that was crazy. I didn't know this was a thing. Let's see. So let's go back to, let's try these environmental ones. Let's try a town. Let's see the property of this. What is this? Yeah, so these are, I'm pretty sure these are all MP3s. Oops. Ah, it's a mixture. That sucks. So I'm going to right click group or sort by type or group by type. Yeah, that's what was doing it. So I had two file types. Now sort by type okay so let's try this again so these are the mp3s mixed with waves so that's what happened here well there's a something you learn every day i guess so you don't want to have wave files mixed in with these mp3s and i think it only supports mp3s i'm not sure don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure that was the problem okay so let me just try these uh mp3s first so that's this top layer up here. And now holding shift, I'm right clicking and going copy as path. And file import, control V as in Victor. So these are all MP3s. I don't see any WAV files. Darn, did it again. So there must be something going on here. Uh, let's see. MP3, MP3. So those are all MP3 files. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong now. But nonetheless, that's how you're supposed to copy those in. Let me try just one. So if I hold, hold the shift key. Nope, that did it too. So something's changed, obviously, but nonetheless, there you go. That's how you do it. And then, of course, you want to make sure that those files are um, in the sounds folder too. So that could be another issue. Did I copy those over? Probably not. 
So let's try. So I'm going to take all of these and copy them to my sounds folder. That might help. Try it again. So that's what I was doing wrong. So my dummy, my dumbass, I didn't have it. Uh, I didn't have the files themselves ported over into the actual directory. That'll do it. So that was my faux pas there. So when I did this initially, I didn't put them in the actual sounds folder. So by the way, <laughs> you got to put them in your sounds folder. <laughs> How stupid was that? All right. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to navigate to the fantasy grounds folder. So normally that's in C users, uh, the username and you have to show hidden files so let's see so let me go back so we go to c drive program data oh go to c users app data roaming Smite works. So I have a folder for this, but I, I want to show you the path. And now Fantasy Grounds. And now here's my sounds folder. So let's try to put those in there. How silly was that? Yeah, so what I got to do, this kind of goes back to the beginning of the video when I said, take the time to go through your files and sort them out and make sure they aren't. Yeah, see, <laughs> I didn't follow my own damn advice. So basically that's what the problem was is that i didn't have the files actually in that folder so that sucks that was a really bad example my 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 fault so I, instead of having them in my fantasy grounds folder i had them in the original directory and then i was copying and pasting that I could should have saw it because the file path was d not c anyway so i'm just gonna um I'm going to make a new folder here. I'll just call it test that way. It's probably already repeated in here somewhere, so I'll delete this later. But if I go in here, hit control V, there's the, the files that I want. They're all MP3s. So now <laughs> I guess I could try this again. So I'm going to hit shift key, grab all these files at once. Right click, copy as path, file import, control victor. Yeah, see now that's the right directory. And then hit file import. Yeah, that worked. I didn't get the, the error message this time. Yep, that was it. So just something stupid like that. It could get easily confused. So make sure you have all your audio sorted out and put into the sounds folder and then you add the routing path through the sounds folder in fantasy grounds not from the original so duh all right so there we go so that's uh yep and it works so that's how you associate the sounds from the actual fantasy grounds uh app and then to the um the third party player which in this case is this this vlc media player so you just saw all the the crap that i went through to figure that out so i was doing that to myself i wasn't being careful i wasn't even taking my own advice so 
just be careful with that. So when you're control copy, make sure it's copy as path. Make sure it's not MP3s mixed in with WAV files. I don't know if that works. And then also <laughs> make sure that you're copying from the Fantasy Grounds directory, not the original directory that you copied the files from. And then from here, you can uh, control this if you use the VLC player. So you can pause it. You can turn the volume down. You know, that's nice. That's what this whole thing is about. All that for this. And then when you want to make your own library sounds, you're going to go into the sound sets and create your own sound set. So what happens is you can actually, let's just say you wanted this to be part of, uh, you know, some kind of game or something. You can drag that into here and, and make your own type of thing. So let me try this. So new... So you'd give it a pattern. And I believe you can drag these. File import. And you can do a CSV import. So if you have a spreadsheet that has all your file names on it, you could do it that way. You can also clear this. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can clear this. Let's see what else file import one file per path yeah we already did that so you can make links from this folder and then you can drag them over to these these uh, patterns make your own setup but we'll do that another time uh, creating custom links but there you go so that's a lot of work so you're gonna take the get the deals the VLC player if you want more control or you can do it on this side just kind of do a basic one but then you got your actions over here which I think is kind of missing uh, this file one. This has a folder action name. This one is name folder action. I don't know why it's different, but you, you get the, the point though, that you, it takes some work, some setup and some considerations if you're gonna do it locally.